Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever imitated how a language sounds? Or how you think a language sounds? Most of us have at some points in our lives jokingly imitated what we think a different language might sound like. For example, like saying the words cheng chang chong to a Chinese person. In that situation, we consider it funny that no one considers what the portrayed person might feel, even if they may be hurt. Growing up, being half Chinese and half German, and living in both China and Germany for several years, I've experienced a unique blend of perspectives and challenges, one of which is pervasive, yet often invisible. There are various scenarios in our society where people behave differently towards the other person based on their appearance. What they are not aware of is that these can be perceived as microaggressions. So what is microaggression? According to the Cambridge Dictionary, microaggression is a small act or remark that makes someone feel mistreated or insulted because of their race, sex, etc., even though the insult may not have been intended. And that can combine with other similar acts or remarks over time to create emotional harm. Microaggressions, these subtle comments and harmless remarks are unconsciously part of our everyday conversations. Obviously, different people perceive remarks differently. Some may be hurt and some may not. But for the people where it does hurt, these aggressions act like tiny cuts, almost noticeable at first. But over time, they accumulate and leave a mark on our well-being. Today, I would like to take you along on a journey into the causes and effects of microaggression in hopes that we could be a little bit more aware of our actions and think again and again before acting. Now, what are the different types of microaggressions? Microaggression could be performed either verbally or behaviorally. Verbal microaggression is, as what it sounds like, performed verbally. These are comments that subtly stigmatize marginalized groups. One example pointing towards women could be, oh, you're so smart for a woman, but it could also be towards people with disabilities, such as using the words lame or crazy towards them. Now let's move on to behavioral microaggressions. These could be expressed through body languages and gestures that indicate disrespect towards certain groups. For example, like pedestrians avoiding eye contact with people of a certain race, or in a restaurant where people, where the bartenders serve other customers first, although minorities came in before them. Moreover, Behavioral microaggression could also be expressed when someone creates an atmosphere that ostracizes certain groups. For example, like when Chinese people touch foreigners' hairs out of curiosity as they think that the texture, or I don't know, is different. In fact, I experienced that myself when I was in China in the Chinese metro, having my AirPods on, listening to music, about to go meet my friends. All of a sudden, a Chinese grandma came to me and tried to touch my hair. I was just like, well, what are you trying to do? Instead of apologizing or saying anything, she was just shocked that I spoke Chinese. So she literally asked me, do you speak Chinese? And I was just like, obviously, because I am half Chinese. She smelled awkwardly and just walked away. Now, in these situations, I'm aware that they meant no harm, but they still make, made me slightly uncomfortable and gave me a sense of discomfort. This also leads me to the next point that I am going to talk about which is the effects of microaggression. The first major impact of microaggression is its impact on mental health. Imagine living a life with a repeated voice of doubt and invalidation. This is often the case for marginalized societies. These encounters will accumulate over time, eroding an individual's sense of self-worth and belonging, which could lead to emotional fatigue. Furthermore, this could also normalize biases, if these behaviors remain in a society for a longer period of time, they could reinforce and perpetuate discriminatory attitudes. For example, the casual uses of phrases like, oh, I'm sure they didn't mean anything by that, you should try to fit in more, or you're just being oversensitive here, or all normalize harmful stereotypes. If these behaviors remain in a society for a longer period of time, biases could be seen as normal, acceptable, and unremarkable. This might happen less in our school, as most of the people here are from international backgrounds. 
But imagine coming from an immigrant family, going to a school where the majority of the people are from one certain race. Due to the fact that it is unusual for them to see people they deem as different, they could often unintentionally make jokes that could cause irritation towards that one student. Over time, that one student could be really irritated and confused and question their own identities. Now, this does sound intense and severe, but there are still ways, such as fighting back and education, to change the situation. Victims of microaggression have a unique and powerful tool they can always use, which is their own experience. By asserting and sharing their own experience with others, individuals can shine a light on the behaviors that are often overlooked or dismissed. When they speak out, they validate their own knowledge and encourage other people to do the same. For example, when someone explains how a comment like, what are you, you're so interesting looking, impacts them, it opens doors for others to reconsider their words and actions. Now, this is not about shaming or blaming, but about fostering understanding in a society by engaging in open dialogues and discussions, individuals can better see the world from a different perspective and foster a world of understanding and unity. Another way to improve the situation is by education. Schools, workplaces, community organizations now have more and more people from international backgrounds due to globalization. But despite globalization, there are still these actions taking place on a daily basis. Now, by implementing programs and workshops, individuals can better understand the nuances of microaggression and the impacts on the people who have experienced it. Such discussions are really important as they help us understand the world and promote respect and inclusion. Finally, after talking about the various types of microaggressions, the impacts it can have on people, and possible ways to change the situation, I would like to end this talk by a quote from Barbara Mikulski. Each one of us can make a difference. Together, we make a change. By understanding and addressing microaggressions, we can help see the world from a different perspective and actually understand how the people who have experienced it feel. It begins with us, each one of us committing to introspection and inclusion. By choosing empathy, over indifference, and education over ignorance, we can help challenge the subtle forms of microaggressions that persist in our daily lives. Once again, each one of us can make a difference. Together, we make a change. Thank you for listening.